Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make a delicious treat for the fall, my pumpkin cheesecake bars. Now I'm using a nine by nine pan, and I think the best thing to do is line it with some parchment paper. It'll just make it easier to remove that way. So I like to use these pre-cut parchment sheets and then cut them down. The best way to do that is line up your pan to the very edge. You could use a pencil, or I usually just eyeball it, to be honest. <laughs> and I just cut right along the side. And then once you have one sheet, you can take that and put it on the other sheet and use that as a guide and just cut that. Now, one thing I do like to do before I put the paper in here is just spray the corners with a little bit of baking spray. And I do this because when you put the batter in, if the paper comes loose anywhere, like around the corners, you'll be covered and be able to take your cheesecake out. Then you're gonna lay one parchment paper on top and just crease it in and then have the other sheet Go in the opposite direction and crease it in like that. This will make our cheesecake a lot easier to remove once it's baked. So then you can set this aside. Now for the crust, I am working with ginger snaps because I love the combination of the spicy ginger snap, that decadent cream cheese, and the pumpkin on top. It is a fantastic flavor combination for fall because you have those three different layers. Now, if you don't have ginger snaps, you could also use chocolate cookies. You could ground those up. That would be really good. You know, like Oreos and just scrape out the filling. Or you could use graham crackers. If you're using graham crackers, maybe add a little bit of pumpkin pie spice in the graham cracker mixture because that will give you almost a similar effect. If you have a Trader Joe's near you, I'm using their triple ginger snap. It's really fantastic when it turns into the crust for your bar, so you can look for those. So you're looking for one and a half cups of crumbs, so that is about 195 grams of cookies. They're sweet enough, so you don't need to add any sugar, but we are gonna add three tablespoons of melted butter Cookie crust like this can be tricky for people sometimes. I find it's all about the melted butter. So if you want a crumbly crust, don't use as much melted butter. Maybe use two tablespoons if you want something more crumbly. If you want a crispier crust, use more butter. We're gonna pulse this up until we get a nice crumb. There, okay, looking good. Now that I've pulsed this up, you can see the little specks of candy ginger that are in these cookies. It's so great. It adds this really nice, like kind of gourmet touch to the crust of your cookies. And then you can transfer it into your pan. And once you feel it's level, go ahead and take a metal measuring cup and just go in there and tamp down the crumbs with the measuring cup because that will really help you get a nice, even, flat seal on the bottom there. There, we are gonna bake our crust at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for just about eight to 10 minutes. Now for the cream cheese filling. So in the bowl of a standing mixer, or you can use an electric mixer, we're going to add some cream cheese. Now, normally I like the whipped cream cheese for cheesecakes because I find it adds a lot of air and lightness, but for these bars, the cheesecake will still be light, but I think it's a little bit easier to cut into if you use the brick cream cheese or the tub cream cheese, the kind that's not whipped, and we have 24 ounces here. Just make sure your cream cheese is at room temperature because it'll be softened that way and it'll incorporate better with the rest of your ingredients. Then I'm gonna add three quarters cup of white granulated sugar. And you wanna beat this up first to incorporate the sugar with the cream cheese. And then you wanna add three quarters cup of room temperature sour cream. And then you wanna add two and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Or you could also add a vanilla bean. It's just vanilla beans and vanilla right now are so expensive. I don't know what's gotten into them. So you can just use the extract. And then you also wanna add a half a teaspoon of salt. There you go, just to boost all those flavors. And at this point, scrape down the bowl. Then you wanna add two eggs, one at a time, and beating in between each addition. And then scrape down the bowl again. Now here comes my secret ingredients for cheesecake, and that's a little bit of flour, especially for the bars, because you wanna be able to get nice clean slices out of them. And I find a little bit of flour, and we're using three tablespoons, just gives you a little bit more structure. I think the combination of the flour and the low baking temperature prevents the need from having to use a water bath, which any way I can prevent having to use a water bath, I am all for. So then just set your cream cheese mixture aside, and now we're gonna whip up the pumpkin mixture. So the pumpkin mixture is really easy to put together. All you need is three quarters cup of pure pumpkin puree, so not pumpkin pie filling, because we are gonna add our own flavoring to it. We just want the pure pumpkin. And then you're gonna add a teaspoon and a half of brown sugar, and then a half a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. If you don't have pumpkin pie spice where you live, you can check the description, and I will give you a link to my recipe on how to make pumpkin pie spice, which is super easy and delicious. You can make a big batch for fall for all the American recipes that you're seeing across social media. And then a good pinch of salt. 
and a little bit of vanilla extract, about a quarter of a teaspoon. That's all you need. And then you can just whisk this right up. I love my mini whisk. It's in my Amazon shop if you want one for yourself. I'll leave you the link. Now, if you were to taste this, this would not be very tasty. <laughs> it's not ready yet. This needs the cream cheese mixture to be folded into it, just a little bit. So all we need, because this is essentially going to be the topping, the swirl on our cheesecake bars, we're just gonna take a quarter of a cup. So we're gonna go in with our little measuring cup. It doesn't have to be totally exact. Somewhere in the neighborhood is good. And just whisk this into the pumpkin. And it'll become a much prettier color too, watch. This would be a great dessert idea for Halloween that's coming up because you can make nine squares. You can feed nine people and you can even cut the squares in half. I'll show you how to do that to serve 18 people. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now we are at the fun part, but before we start adding our batter and swirling and twirling all of this, we want to just fold these parchment things back just because it'll make it a little bit easier to pour the batter in. If you wanted to really be extra, you could clip these <laughs> with little bulldog clips, but I don't have any here. So we're just gonna fold it back. So we first wanna add our cream cheese mixture, and you can also mix the bottom if you need to, if like some of that cream cheese hasn't incorporated. Then you can just spread it out with your spatula into each corner. So just make sure that the corners have enough of this cream cheese filling. Once it's in all the corners, then take a little offset spatula and just smooth out the top. There, you just want a nice level cream cheese batter. And then you can also give your pan a shake just to let gravity do its thing and level out the batter. Now for the really fun part, <laughs> the pumpkin swirling. Okay, so now we're gonna take just a little tiny scooper or you could use a spoon and you want to create little dollops all on this cheesecake batter. The dollops do not need to be perfect. In fact, the more organic looking, the better. You'll see why. Then take a skewer or a long toothpick and we're gonna go horizontally first. And you wanna be dragging it through the cream cheese as well on your way here. And then you're gonna go vertically. And as you go vertically, go down the area where there isn't any pumpkin as well. So, you know, like you can go up this little alley here and then down through the pumpkin. And see what that's doing? It's just creating this really beautiful, almost like cobweb effect. And then you can really kind of get going and just swirl it around. Like whatever you think is prettiest. Now, here's a little trick for you. You see how I put too much pumpkin puree here and I've got like a sea of pumpkin? You can fix that. So you just take some of the extra batter, which is why it might be a good idea just to leave a little bit of batter in the bowl, just in case this is just what was on the side. And you can dollop that on top of the pumpkin. And then we're gonna go back through with our trusty skewer and just swirl that through. See, and that will just loosen it up a bit. Then you're gonna pop this in the oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for just about 35 to 40 minutes, just until the cheesecake is set. It'll still jiggle a little bit, but you don't want it like sloshing around. It shouldn't be liquidy in the center, just a little jiggly. Okay, our cheesecake is out of the oven. Now you do wanna allow this to cool down. I would let it go for at least 35 minutes, 40 minutes. Then you wanna pop this in the refrigerator. I think overnight is better, but four hours minimum. It'll really firm up that way, be a lot easier to slice. And I would not cover it because if it's the slightest bit warm, when you go to put it in the fridge, it'll start to build up condensation. And then that will drip down into your beautiful cheesecake and ruin your design a little bit. So I just think it's better to just keep it just like this in the fridge. All right, so I did make this one last night so you could see what it's like once it's completely refrigerated. I think I did a better job on the swirling on this one, you'll see, um, because I wasn't distracted <laughs> with all the cameras and whatnot. It's a really fun dessert for Halloween because it kind of looks like a cobweb. Pull this out like so, see? And then it's gonna be a lot easier to slice. And then you can pull the parchment paper down like so and then you wanna cut it into nine squares. So make sure you have a really nice sharp chef's knife and give it a slice. It does help if you cut it on a cutting board like this because you really wanna make sure that your knife goes all the way through cutting the crust. And then to preserve your design on top, I think it's good to have a paper towel and wipe off your knife in between each slice so that you're just getting clean cuts across the board. It's so <laughs> satisfying to cut into when it's nice and chilled like this. It's kind of a combination between a pumpkin pie and a cheesecake, 
with that ginger snap crust. It's so delicious. All right, once you have your two cuts like that, I think it's easiest to just turn the cheesecake and then do your other two cuts. That way, it'll just be easier to slice. You have the ginger snap crust, the delicious decadent cheesecake, and then of course, the spiced pumpkin. Now this is a pretty generous serving. This would be great for a dessert if you're sitting down having a dinner party. But if you're having a party and you have more people, I would actually cut these into little triangles. So you could just cut it down the diagonal. And that's still a pretty generous piece. But see how yummy this would also be with the chocolate crust? So I would even try both and see which one you like best. All right, let me give it a taste. Mm. Oh, they're so good. They're just really decadent and really delicious. And they just, I think, scream fall. So if you're really getting into the fall spirit, it's October, it is time for our pumpkin recipes. I hope you make this one part of your repertoire this year. Now, if you are looking for one more treat for your Halloween party, you can click this annotation and learn how to make my chocolate donuts. They would be perfect with these. All right, you guys, I'll see you over there. Bye.